28, but I, it, this might actually go beyond tonight because I, I had to back it up a little bit because um, I feel for us to fully understand the resurrection, we got to back it up to, to the creation and, and to understand what the whole the whole plan, God's plan was, and kind of start from the get-go. So um, that's what we'll do tonight. Uh, what is, uh, why is the resurrection so important and celebrated? Um, does anybody want to share on what their understanding of the power of the resurrection is for the group? Does anyone have any questions about resurrection power or the resurrection itself? So for us to, to um, the word resurrected, the definition of it is to restore to life, to restore a dead person to life. So the word resurrection is the action or the fact of resurrection, resurrecting or being, resurrect, being resurrected. Um, so to better understand that, I'd like to start off by reading in Genesis, the beginning of Genesis chapter 2. So if you guys could uh, open up your Bibles. There is there is a Bible at each table if anyone needs one. Or there's a couple up here if anyone needs one. I'm firing mine up. That is page two for, for those of you guys that have the, the NIV's Bibles. Everybody got it? Okay, so chapter 2 picks up on the seventh day when God rested after creating the heavens and the earth. Everybody there? Cody, you got it? Page, page, page two. two. Got it. Uh, yeah, we're going to start back up. Mm -hmm. All right, Genesis chapter two. Verse one. Verse one. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creating what he had done. Verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Verse 8. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put a man he had there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from even Eden, and there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pe Go ahead. Anyone who knows? Pishon? Pishon? Close enough. Sound good? Yeah. It, it winds through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx is also there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it 
and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Uh, we're just going to stop right there. Hold that spot, though. We'll come back to that in a bit. Um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and this gift called life as we know it. As part of a divine plan to build his eternal kingdom. How amazing is it to be part of that plan? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I don't know about you guys, but that, that verse carried me through prison a long time. The kingdom of heaven is being built on the living souls of all who have passed and will pass from this life as believers dedicated to forever worshiping King Jesus and God the Father. He is forever worthy to be praised, honored, and glorified. God's plan for man was to be God's plan for man and creation was perfect up until this point. It also included free will, which is also a free gift. Imagine life without free will. And when we imagine that, we should thank and praise God for it. Let's pick up uh, and start reading again in verse 18. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. I just want to take, take note of that verse right there. Um, God created all the animals, and but yet he allowed man to name them. So that just speaks of our purpose here on earth, I believe that. God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us, but surely a God who can create anything from anything uh, didn't need someone to name the animals he created, but he gave him that choice. It speaks of free will and, and, uh, and the free will that he gives us daily and, uh, and that purpose that he gave man on this earth. Uh, and whatever the man called each living creature that was its name so the man gave names to all the livestock the birds in the sky and all the wild animals but for Adam no suitable helper was found so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep and while he was sleeping he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt shame. Felt no shame. Uh, I think that's key to to uh, describing the kingdom of God that the kingdom that God had created uh, there being no shame Adam and his wife were, were naked walking around the garden with no shame the, the, the world that God had created was perfect and up until this point um, it was, it, before sin had entered the world it was a perfect place it's just hard to imagine there being no shame uh, shame dominates the world today because of this the sin that entered the world through this one man and woman. Um, I just want to read uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 13 yet, yeah, and then uh, we'll talk about that. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You will not touch it. You must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened 
and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, where are you? He said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The, woman, the man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So what we see here, The first thing that affected the perfection of God's perfect plan and creation was an influence. The definition of an influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. The impact of an influence changed the order of God's perfect plan. The perfect plan of creation need, now needed perfect plan of salvation <clears throat> how easily are we swayed by the influences of those around us I don't know about you guys but I was very easily swayed for a, for a long time and uh, it's just it speaks a lot to our surroundings and being aware of our surroundings and we need to uh, constantly stand on guard and uh, protect our surroundings, be, be aware of what we're coming up against. Because an influence, uh, there was an influence of deception through the evil one to Eve, and she then influenced Adam, and that's where it all started. Sin enters the world and changes the order of a perfect creation. Up until this point in time, creation was perfect. It was, God had created heaven on earth at this point up until this point as it points out in verse 8 the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day God was actually walking in the garden the, the man and the, uh, Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden it just uh, paints a, a beautiful picture of how it must have been you know imagine um, living in a perfect world no shame and God walking he still walks amongst us but but the, that, this was a physical walking they heard the sound of it, and he was right there with us boy you got to also to add to that what you're saying um, you know we go off on our own little standards we do our own little thing mm -hmm. if we if we go off on that fall if you, you will fall off the wagon yeah Oftentimes we come back and we're embarrassed about that or we're ashamed of ourselves or that shame and stuff is what holds us yeah. in that because if we're not willing to leave go, leave God. That's right. You got to leave go. Let go and let go. Yeah. We need to fully understand that we serve an everlasting God who never changes. His ways are eternally righteous and good. He never changes. However, the same is true. Uh, this influence came through the deceiver, the same deceiver that we deal with on the daily now. Um, the same is true for the deceiver, the evil one. His, his ways are eternally unrighteous and the evil one, he also never changes. His goal is still the same to to uh, pull us, to separate us from the loving God. Influences, deception, choices, and sin are as real for us today as they were for Adam and Eve back then. 
And just as it was then, it is now. Sin can have no place in the kingdom of God. And not one sin, no, no, not, how's it go? No, not one sin is greater than another. I think I just heard somebody share that tonight somewhere. Is that you, Rod? Um, it's very easy to put sin, sin on different levels and pedestals, but in God's eyes, there's no, not one sin greater than another. So, and and uh, it all needs to be repented of the same. Until sin is made right, it stands as a dividing force between God and the guilty. How is sin made right? Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. The only way to cover or make atonement for sin is with life blood. Does anybody know what the definition of atonement is? To make right. To make right. Reparation or making amends for a wrongdoing, or in this case, sin. In the Old Testament, sacrificing a live animal was the only way to cover a sin in order to give one right standing with God. This is kind of this is kind of taking a bunny bunny trail off of the resurrection story, but I really felt like it needed to go back to the beginning to build the story leading to the resurrection. So that's why I, I backed it up a little bit from uh, from our scripture of Matthew 28. But um Leviticus 17 11 and you guys don't have to turn to these I got a whole bunch of scriptures here so I'm just gonna uh, quickly read through some of these this has to do with sacrifice a sacrifice being made for sin uh, for the life of a creature is in the blood and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life and also Hebrews 9.22. Um, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. There was a, there was a sacrifice. I don't know, did you guys ever read through Leviticus? It's, uh, it's uh, God's way of keeping order with his and right standing with his children there was a there was a sacrifice that needed to be made a live animal needed to be sacrificed to cover every type of sin and Leviticus is a whole book of uh, law and sacrifices and, and uh, it pretty much turns into a bloodbath uh, as you quickly read and, and just see all the different types but uh, this is all this is all uh, setting the stage and pointing to a savior that would come. It was all, uh, this was God's way of, of Old Testament order and right standing with him. Imagine the work of the, blood, the bloodshed that went into trying to live and lead a godly lifestyle. And we just think back across our lives and, you know, sin, not one sin is greater than another. Think about each one that would have needed a each one of our sins that would have needed bloodshed. It's uh, hard to imagine what, how many trips to the to the temple they must have made, right? Oh boy. Yep. That's a little bit like you were saying about with the crucifixion of Jesus. You know, as you were talking about Levi or Leviticus, mm -hmm. that is why if you if you take notice to the cru the crucifixion story, Christ is most times in Roman times. If you're going to be just crucified, you're gone. Yeah. If you look at the, the, the uh, uh, trial with Barnabas or Barabbas, you know, relates to him to us, Barabbas. Boom, Barabbas goes out, he's free. Yeah. And Jesus is kept there. Well, the significance of that is going back to Leviticus. Mm -hmm. If you notice, Jesus was tried by not only the Romans, he was tried by his own people. The Levites, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, 
also tried Jesus at that point in time and put him on the cross. Yeah. That's why it took him so long. Where if he would have been a normal, if it would have been a normal Roman execution, <laughs> you're on the tree. Yeah. So it took, you know, it took hours for him to get through his crucifixion. Wasn't it? Isn't it in the scripture that the Romans didn't even want to? Yeah, yeah. Pontius Pilate yeah, Pontius Pontius didn't Pilate want it back on. Yeah, well, he said, "No, so he's your people. Yeah. We don't see yeah. anything wrong with him." He washed his hands and said, uh, I, "I want nothing he, to do yeah, with this." He didn't want the aftermath, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And they kept pushing him and pushing him. Yeah. Same thing, influence. Yeah. 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 And influence, like they 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 want to leave him alone, but they didn't to get in their ear. And they yeah. knew better too. I think it, when we speak about the influence of it, it even goes back, it goes right back to the deceiver influencing the people to crucify him. Uh -huh. But greater than that is the, the one standing behind it all. It was, it was, it was all prophetic. It was all, it all had to be done to lead up to the death and resurrection. Still took, God still took, it was meant for evil. That's right. And they did. Yeah. Always in control, right? Uh, so with, with all this sacrificing going on, as you can imagine, the, this way of order quickly became a bloodbath and a show of works. The world was in need of a savior. Uh, Luke chapter 2. And again, you guys don't have to turn there if you don't want to. Yeah. As long as it's taken me, you might have time to rewrite it. Luke chapter, chapter, Luke chapter two. 2, verse 11. Uh, the world was in need of a Savior. Uh, oh, I still missed it. <clears throat> Do not be afraid. Oh, this was, uh, this was an, the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds with the good news of the birth of Christ. Uh, do not be afraid. I bring you the good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Uh, sorry, I lost my spot. I also had, uh, there was another, Isaiah had a verse That prophesied the birth of Christ as well. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Always love that verse. So everything that was going on in the Old Testament through sacrifices was pointing to and painting a picture of Jesus being our one-time blood sacrifice for the atonement of, of sin in our lives. His bloodshed would be the last blood sacrifice required. The grace of God made a way. His name is Jesus and our debt he paid. Please turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. And for you guys who have the NIVs, it's on page 68. I'm going to back it up. Uh, to Matthew 27, 27. I was gonna I was gonna start reading at at the resurrection, but I, I really feel like we need to set the uh, set the tone. Yeah. Yep. Because uh, we're talking about sacrifice, all the sacrifices for sin, and, and this is 
this is the ultimate sacrifice right here. So let's let's start reading in. Uh, is any would anybody like to read? <clears throat> okay. Twenty-seven. Twenty Matthew twenty-seven twenty-seven, 27 through 27. fifty. For right now. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him, and they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon. They forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watching over him. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were cru crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him, let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The same way the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lemma, <laughs> which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the cur curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rock split. Thank you. Yep, that's good. Thank you. Um, I mean, that paints quite a picture in your head every time you read that. Um, spit on the stripes he took for us. I was say, that's not even in the whippings. And the, no. Just, there's more. Yeah, there's so much more. Um, but he did that all for us to be able to be washed clean and made right in right standing with the loving God. The grace of God, his name is Jesus, and uh, he did all this for you and I. And it's such a such a blessing to be able to stand here and, and uh, in his presence and worship him. And, and uh, I'm just in awe that he, he would do that for us, for an undeserved sinner like me. And uh, I think we can all relate to that. Um, there's, there's even more to that. He, he did that, and he had never sinned. That's right. So like, it, to me, it's even more intense. He never did anything wrong. He still took yeah. all that torment and the spit and beating to say, we've done wrong. Yeah. And most of the time, we don't get everything we deserve for our sins, crimes. And he did nothing. He still yeah. did that horror. Does anybody know how that verse goes? He who, he who. He who sins gets the first stone. No, he who. He who doesn't. He who doesn't know right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I can't. Uh, it was on the tip of my tongue. But I, I don't know that. I either. got the King, the King James Version flashing. Something about he who, he who has never sinned. I forget how it goes. But anyhow. Um, so. As sin and death entered the world through the first man's life, through Adam, forgiveness and everlasting life entered our world through a Savior's death, the greatest sacrifice. His shed blood is more than enough 
to cover all sin. Every one of us, all of our sin. Jesus died so that we might live, even unto eternity. But we still need to daily do our part. Anybody like to write, uh, read uh, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10? Some, some of you might have, even, might even have it memorized. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Got it. Go ahead. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For, for it is with, with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess your faith and you are saved. Amen. So, so Jesus died a cruel death for the covering of our sins and made it all possible for us to be forgiven. But we still need to do our part. We need to make a confession with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead. Repentance is key. Acts 3.19. You know, part of that, yeah, um, if you think about that, you know, God the Father, you look, you look at how that would affect you, you know, if you were taking one of your children and putting them to cover everybody else's sin, that, that being a hard thing to be able to do. Jesus wasn't even anybody's his father or something, you know, father. He was he was basically one of our brothers and he he did what the father said, you know, he, he went and carried that. I mean I have to speak for myself. I mean I'd like to say I do that for one of my brothers in here, but the reality is, you know, I I probably crumble under that pressure. There's, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, I I would die to the flesh at that point. I'm sure. I can't say that for a fact, but I mean, knowing knowing that there's a lot of the flesh that comes in me, I mean, that's likely that's what you would crumble to. It'd be easier to say I do it for my kids. Yeah. Yeah. I can't I can't say that, but for yeah. one of y'all, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. But this was the very people Jesus created. Yeah. Yes. It was in sense his children were spitting on him and whipping him. Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah, but not only that, it was actually also too the church leaders of the day. It was the people who you sat in the same pew with in your church. It was the, the pastors, the elders, the priests, the Levites, the Sadducees, everybody of of religious importance at that time. Yeah. You know, the people you would think that would have said, oh, Jesus, you know, you're, you're miserable. Like, well, uh, come on, man, let's talk. Well, even, even some people with his apostles, yeah. one that didn't, he said he, he won't declare my name three times, or you he turned it back on me. He knows there was, like, the 12 apostles were his dudes. And yeah. One turned them in, right, for 30 pieces of silver. Judas, yep. Judas burned them, and then his other right hand man just like I don't know who you are yeah. Yeah. so even further than the church like his group the 12 apostles his people his buds yeah. well they said what was it he returned to Nazareth and he could do no miracles there because of all the unbelief yeah. and that was his own place his own yeah, yeah. where it came from it's great that I don't know that yeah. Well, you know? yeah yeah I mean you and I read about this stuff that's in here I mean if we know it's true but these guys walked alongside. They physically they saw the, it. This, well, right. things that he could do, and they Peter, would, they would say no. Them, stepped out of the boat onto the water with him, and it wasn't until he looked at the situation around him he started to sink. Yep. Yeah. So why why was it that they wouldn't accept him for who he said he was? Was it because he didn't wear an actual crown? He didn't come in, and they they wanted to see somebody destroy Rome and. and <clears throat> Yeah, they wanted the physical, the physical relief of the oppression, yes. not not the spiritual yep. relief of the oppression. Yep. And to see what they were doing to him and the way he lived his life as a servant, yeah. not as a king. Yeah. Or I, again, I think I, that's what the topic at hand: influence. Yeah. I think people are easily manipulated Absolutely. and influenced when they hear a small group, and even especially if they say it's strong. Well, how about? Just like Satan did in the, in the garden. Yeah. Uh, he, he's the real king. Like, so how come he's not wearing a crown? How come? Out in people's minds. Yeah. 
So right. it takes one, one or two, and then that person, and if I hear Steve doesn't believe anymore, and maybe he's right. And Sweat did the same thing. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. I think, too, you know, a lot of it comes down to, like, Fritz and Gene and Seth and I know each other for years. And I think a lot of it, and even in pastoral school and ministry school, they'll teach you. One of the hardest bases to teach in is your hometown. Is the people that you would think have your back are the hardest ones to influence because so many people we are geared as people to say, Well, I've got my beliefs and this is right and this is wrong. Out the male syndrome kicks in and says, I'm not listening to Boyd, man. Boyd's full of mud. But you know, the thing of it is, if we can grow as Christ did. <clears throat> Christ might have not agreed with the Islamic people or the Muslim of the day. He might have not agreed with the Jewish custom of the day. But he could agree to disagree. And overall, he loved them people. Now, what kind of story does that make? You know, that you can, you may not be able to witness in your hometown because of the, what you've been through for 53 years for me or however old you are. But yet I might find that brother like you. Or like these guys, or even Fritz. Even. You know, God doesn't tell me who I can witness to, but He's going to open <clears throat> people's eyes to see the change. Because in Matthew it says, "By their fruits you shall know them." Yes. That's all that matters. Yes. You know that that's really true about people from your own circle. There, I mean, you and I have talked about this already too. You know that I've had people come and meet. You know, if you're your past, you're talking to me like this, really? You know, but you get outside people who don't know who you are or where you came from, and it's easy to influence somebody like that because they don't know they don't know where you came from. Yeah. You know, they, they they see they see what they see right now. Yeah. They don't see you know, who you were. In my eyes, where I stand now, it would be easier for me to believe somebody who came from a broken past and see where they are now. But I know, I know. From I the know. outside, from people in your own circle, and a lot of times it's like, are you kidding me? You're going to talk to me like that right now? Like, and, and I can... Stepping one up. I can add to that because I've got half my dad, my dad's whole family will not talk to me anymore. We are divorced. Okay, so I made a mistake, or whatever happened. You weren't there. You're not accountable for that. That's my accountability. When we get to heaven, you're not going to be accountable for me, brother. I'm going to be accountable for myself. I'm going to stand before that judge. I'm going to stand before that, before my father, and say, you know what, Dad, <laughs> I screwed up. But so many people take that and they want to point their fingers to hide their own. Their own, what we call it, sin or, or thing, or just like you know, with, just like not, you were sometimes saying. Sometimes it's not even a sin yeah. they're hiding. They just have you know, but, but doubts, sin. doubts inside themselves that they don't want exactly. to bring to the surface. Fears. But Seth, you were so much worse than me. You know how, how could how can Seth is well, worse than me? Yeah, I'm like, not like about <clears throat> fear. We weren't given a spirit of fear. So that in and of itself goes against yep. the gospel and against God's God's will and everything. So it makes it sin. Yep. I was still employed, and I told you guys on the way over here. I was nervous about coming out here. It's a mild stomping grounds. Just not too long ago, I was arrested a couple blocks down on Chestnut Street. And I don't want to run into somebody going, you're not even doing Bible study and we have prayer, but you know, we know what you're doing. I really didn't want to run across that because I didn't know if I was strong enough. And why should that keep me away from doing good? Like, I got good people around me. It didn't feel natural. Like, God's not going to tell me not to go here and, and support my brother and, and get some help that I need to in a place that just because I was sitting in here, I was a terrible individual. I'll be very transparent with all of you. I was terrible out there. So it felt like to not be around you, because a lot of people could say a lot of bad stuff about me. But that's not what I need to do. If you're talking about in the song, if you 
it's, it's yeah. not who I am today. I don't need to be judged by that. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get past those feelings. Sometimes they yeah. really do feel real, like like you are nobody. You don't don't go over there. You would it know. would it be safe to say that it's because of the fear of the influence that you might, that how you might be influenced? No, so, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried. I guess I, I was more nervous about running into them and just the judgment. Yeah. But the non belief yeah. and, and being a new Christian, I don't know if I'd be ready to combat that appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. Combat has yeah. never been an issue for me. Combat appropriately <laughs> would be the would be the stress at hand. Would I be able to keep my Christianity yeah. light switch yeah. on the time he says or would I turn it off and all right, when you walk back into your hometown professing them like you're the son of the most high God and they're going, You're just a carpenter, dude. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't hear that from you. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know, babies weren't born running or walking. You know, they had to start too from yeah. crawling. When you're born again, you you're you're starting to walk. It's like baby step. You don't you don't jump in and get overwhelmed by everything. Amen. It doesn't work. I'm noticing. You, you'd be surprised, you know, as long as you keep, you keep the Lord's name in the back of your mind and you just keep repeating that when you're, when you feel you're encountering that situation, we do the same thing when we go out on the street. I mean, that's the first time I went out, I was like, oh man, it's crazy. Like, I don't do stuff like this. But, but you know, you, you keep that in your mind and you just repeat that to yourself, you know, that, that the, you know, the Lord's going to speak through me. And, and when that situation encounters, I, I stopped and talked to people. That, like, I was in the middle of the conversation before I realized even what was going on. And the Lord has just gave me the words at that time. Yeah. I think I think uh, it's ten till nine. I think uh, we're gonna kind of wrap things up if it's okay with everyone we're going to kind of pick up next week on this one because we got a long way to go and i want to i want to really i want to talk next week about walking in resurrection power um easter is a beautiful thing it's an awesome celebration i'm glad to be uh able to freely celebrate it but uh it's is it enough to just celebrate it i mean we're what i want to focus on next week is is it by chance that the resurrection and the commission are in the same chapter. I believe that we've been given resurrection power for a purpose. And uh, I just really want to focus on, on uh, you know, one thing we discovered tonight was how easily we're influenced and we've been influenced and Eve was influenced and uh, how, even, how easily we're swayed by influence. So, so knowing that, could we as brothers encourage each other to be influenced in the Lord and do the right things and work together. So let's let's turn that that influence uh, and we get that through the power of the resurrection. So I'm just going to carry it over into next week. If that's all right with you guys, we'll just pick up pick up there. Thanks for your thanks for your uh, openness, your transparency. Your I appreciate the sharing, absolutely. And uh, thanks again for uh, another awesome week. So if everyone's okay with that, we'll carry on. Next week, we'll pick up where we left off. Thank you. God bless you. Get some coffee. Get some snacks.